Tonight, a KPIX5 original report. Could California's giant redwoods hold the key to tackling climate change? The giant trees may be our biggest natural ally for pulling harmful carbon dioxide from the air. KPIX5 Darren Peck live in Alameda County tonight with the innovative new effort to harness the power of these giant redwoods. Darren? Ken and yeah, if Ken and Liz, if if we just give them the right conditions, redwood trees like the one growing over my shoulder here in Berkeley can do some amazing things. They can get back to doing what they had been doing in this state for thousands of years. And now the National Park Service and Save the Redwood Leagues have embarked on a project to help them do just that. The beauty of this place is that it is such a blend of of accessible wildness. If you hike with Sam Hodder, the man in charge of Save the Redwoods League, you expect to hear him talk about saving redwoods. But on our walk in Reinhardt Park above Oakland, Sam was actually talking about how redwoods can help save us. They are just machines at sequestering carbon. So that means that they pull carbon out of the atmosphere to make wood. And as we know, redwoods never stop growing and they can grow to be over 2,000 years old. And that is why old growth redwoods like these store more carbon per acre than any other forest in the world. And we've got a million and a half acres of redwoods in California. The challenge is very little of it actually looks like this anymore. From Big Sur to Oregon, only 5% of those original 2,000-year-old giants are left, mostly in national and state parks on the far north coast. Here at home in the East Bay, it was all logged at one point. So everything you see is that second generation of redwoods. But it turns out that's where the real opportunity lies for this project. Researchers looked at five trees right here at Reinhardt Regional Park in the East Bay, and they found those trees were putting on carbon at a faster rate than even the old giants on the far north coast. They're only a century old here, but Reinhardt Redwoods have something most recovering redwood forests don't. Hello. Hello. Elbow room. The forest is pretty open. That means the trees recover faster, and they've got a bigger appetite for carbon. Even within a human lifetime, a redwood forest that is stewarded and left to grow uh, and allowed to grow to maturity uh, is an incredible resource in the fight against climate change. But up north, two-thirds of Redwood National Park still looks like this, decades after being clear-cut. The trees are all the same age, overcrowded, carbon storage lightweight. So the National Park Service and Save the Redwoods are getting to work, selectively thinning out the trees and removing old logging roads, turning forests like this into forests more like this, and setting them on a course to become carbon-consuming heavyweights. If we just look at the initial 9,200 acres of restoration already underway, those redwoods will eventually be able to store three and a half million tons of carbon. That's the same amount as two and a half million cars would emit over an entire year. But the long-term goal is to restore 70,000 acres in the park. If we scale up our numbers, those redwoods will be able to store the same amount of carbon produced by 19 million cars over a year. For perspective, that's more than the total number of cars on the road in the entire state of California. The rates of carbon sequestration in a second growth redwood forest are extraordinary. And it's not only people in the redwood community talking about the immense carbon benefits redwoods offer. There's so many benefits of keeping these forests intact. Rajinder Sahoda spends a lot of time analyzing carbon budgets for the state of California at the Air Resources Board. They are a huge opportunity to pull carbon out of the atmosphere and store it for long periods of time. They are part of the climate solution when we think about carbon neutrality. But it's probably the people on the front lines of this project who have the most direct perspective on what redwoods have to offer us. For purposes of climate change, redwoods show us what is possible. Richard Campbell is a director of restoration for Save the Redwoods. And the fact that there's such a big difference between what we have now and what we can have in the future really allows us to see what we can do with a little work. You know, Darren, uh, we know that California has a lot of rules on environmental work like this, especially when you start talking about thinning out redwoods. That's, that's very controversial. Are there any yeah. potential obstacles as they try to expand this project? You're talking about, you know, covering a full 70,000 acres. 
Yeah, well, the beauty of this project, Ken, is that all of those 70,000 acres are within Redwood National and State Parks. So that makes it easy to do a project like this because you can streamline it. Now, when you think of the potential for redwoods like this one, which is doing a great job of growing back beautifully here in the East Bay, if you think of the potential of a million and a half acres, perhaps one day they start to expand this project outside of the national park boundaries and we start capitalizing on that. But that would then bring in all of the other questions and topics of how do we do that effectively mm -hmm. and how do we do it all together and that's something save the redwoods league will definitely be a part of at that point as well and the redwoods are uh, you know naturally fire resistant so they're in a perfect location right now in this state yeah yeah okay, so a treasure for us to have in this state and as it turns out a hidden ace in our back pocket yeah. to yeah. really start making up some progress here on improving the situation with the carbon dioxide issue.